So being the last information session, today is November 8th and applications are due November 12th, that is this Friday. So we will be talking a little bit about what the program is and let's just go into, so right now on the screen, before I continue, um, it's the Leadership Cayman 2021 class. So this is the graduating class that just finished Leadership Cayman this year. Um, and they have gone through this, the, the program. If you know anyone of, of the individuals that are on the screen, please feel free to reach out to them and ask them what was their experience. Um, we have today with us James, um, that he is part of a planning committee and was also class of 2020, 2021. I keep on saying 2020 for some odd reason, James, I'm putting you in a year before. Um, and we'll be picking his brain in a little bit just to share his experience on, on, on this class. Another important thing that we're going, I'm going to be reviewing is pretty much the order of what we're going to be talking today. Um, we'll be talking about the introduction of what is Leadership Human, its history and its motto, um, the program summary, you know, what does the next six months look like if you decide to do Leadership Human, the structure of, of Leadership Human, you know, what, what to expect, the format, the class project, we are talking about the seminars, but we also talk about a few activities about the class project, what's all of this about, um, a little bit about the alumni experience and, you know, what, apart from what are you going to be doing in these seminars, it's just like the experience that you have. Um, we'll be talking about the application process, the criteria and the process of, you know, how do we select class of 2022? And then we'll be going through any questions um, that you might have. So starting with what is Leadership Cayman? Leadership Cayman is a program that started here in Cayman um, in 2009. The first class was of 2010. It's a six month experience designed to promote and enhance community, community engagement. So it's really important to note that it's not, it's not that conventional leadership program where you're just focused on learning leadership skills, but it really is making you an active community leader understanding your community came in um, as best as possible. So that is the history of Leadership Cayman since 2010. Um, and when we're now in 2022, every year we've had um, maximum 25 um, participants. That's maximum participants that we have every year. We want to, we keep the classes small and you'll see in the format, what's the reasoning behind that. Now, the motto, and this is the part where I, I really like to emphasize that I didn't understand it at the beginning, and the more I'm involved with Leadership Cayman, and after I did my six, six months, I am class of 2015, so I'm obviously an alumni of Leadership Cayman. Um, Leadership Cayman is about connecting, growing, and inspiring. And you will get as much or as little as you want of each of these three pillars as you want to. Um, you connect because you connect not only with your class members that are business and community leaders. And um, as you see in, in the criteria to who joins Leadership Cayman, it's from mid-management up. So you do get to meet a lot of interesting um, people within your class, but you also get to connect with community leaders in each of the seminars. Each of the seminars, the speakers of each of the seminars are community leaders. They are the governor, the premier, the CEO, the chairman, you know, they are individuals that are definitely involved in each of the topics and are key leaders in that, in that seminar. And we'll talk about the seminars in a little bit. Grow. Um, when you grow again, you're going to grow your leadership skills as little or as much as you want. But honestly, my experience is that you, your leadership skills will grow significantly. Um, with your knowledge or without your real, real knowledge of how much you're growing, you are, and you're going to start noticing that your community knowledge in each of the seminars is just going to be growing and growing and growing every time. Um, so that is, for me, this is one of my priceless um, pillars of this, because really you don't get in any other program in Cayman the community knowledge that you will obtain in Leadership Cayman in six months. And then finally, it's the inspire. And in the inspire, it's important to note that you will be inspiring your industry community, your industry, your community, and your peers. And um, I know it sounds a little bit cliche, and it's just like, really, how am I going to be inspiring? You will do it. You will do it automatically because you are going to get so involved in the community, and you're going to get 
so passionate about a topic two, three, four, that you're going to see how you're going, you're going to automatically want to get more involved. And we've seen so many great things coming from the participants of Leadership Cayman with the different topics that we touch of the community. Um, now, going into the program summary and talking about the overview of the curriculum. Um, it's important to note that in the curriculum, it is a, it's six months, so it starts at the end of January and it goes all the way to June. Um, there are 12 seminars. Um, it's important to note the attendance is 10 out of the 12 seminars are mandatory. Um, there are four events, really mandatory, the opening retreat. The opening retreat that it's the 28th and the 29th of January is a mandatory. And, and trust me, I, with my hand in my heart, you do not want to miss the opening retreat. I know it's mandatory, but honestly, it's just one of those that you just don't want to miss. And the class project, which is really giving back to the community, is where the class selects a a community, um, a nonprofit or a charity that we want to work with, and we do something extraordinary for that, um, for that specific charity or nonprofit. And I'm really excited because we're changing it a little bit this year, and um, we're changing it a little bit this year, and we are going to be doing great stuff in the class project. Um, now, I, I'm just going to jump here because I am seeing. Um, we, I am seeing here that are the seminars in person or via Zoom. The seminars are in person. Definitely, um, definitely, we have not done any of the seminars before um, through Zoom. It is a, an experience where you are sharing with the industry leaders. Um, you're asking questions face to face, being able to read that body language, being able to see the different responses, then getting them together. Um, there is, I'm not going to lie, we're looking a little bit about, we are um, considering, you know, what to do with all this COVID quarantine and what can we do about it. But until now, it's all in person, the 12 seminars, um, and confirming that it is 10 classes out of 12, as the website states, 9 out of, out of 12. It is 10 out of 12. So it is mandatory attendance for 10 seminars out of the 12. Um, it's important to note that I can tell you um, with my hand in my heart um, that you once you start going to the seminars, you really don't want to miss any. I remember that in my year, I had to do the criminal, um, I had to miss the criminal justice one specifically, specifically because I had a previous engagement that I had from um, way before starting the starting the leadership came in. So I knew from the beginning that I was going to miss it. And I have to admit, I regretted it infinitely because it was so interesting. And I just didn't want to miss it. Once you start, you just don't want to miss any of the seminars. So we do have, we do have the schedule posted. Um, there was somebody that actually did a really good spot that it was at the mid-year retreat um, that really reinforces your opening retreat was kind of hitting um, the Easter weekend. So we are working to just realign that one for obviously not to affect your Easter weekend or the weekend before, because we're very conscious that a lot of people do plans during those, that period of time. Um, but yeah, so we have the 12 seminars, four events that are the opening retreat. We've got the mid-year retreat, the class project, and we have um, your graduation. And at the end, we obviously celebrate the graduation of Leadership King Now, when we're talking about Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I actually missed one of the events. Um, well, it's it's the orientation dinner. We'll talk a little bit about that. When we're talking about the curriculum, it's important to note that in the curriculum, you know, you have your orientation dinner that I promise it's the only time that you are going to feel awkward with your classmates. It's the first time that you all see each other. It's the first time that the class gets get together. Um, and it really is that first that first time that we are kicking off leadership key men. So it's really a great, it's a really, a really nice dinner. Then afterwards we go into the opening retreat that is a Friday and a Saturday. So when we're talking about the Friday and the Saturday, um, it is all day Friday and it's pretty much all day Saturday until around after lunchtime, late lunch. Um, then you've got the 12 seminars. The dates of the seminars are all actually posted online. 
Um, and if you go into the curriculum, thank you, Chad, for sharing the, the link. Um, you will see all the dates. The only one that I am just saying out loud that we are going to adjust the date on is the mid-year retreat that you do not see it here on, on, on the calendar, um, just because it's hitting Easter week and we're moving it before Easter, not to affect anyone. But all of the scheduled time dates are on the web. And it's important to know, just in case you just want to understand the logic behind it, it's every, once we start, it's every other Wednesday. So it's every Wednesday evening, starts at 5 p.m. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about it um, in the next of just talking about the structure of each of the, of the classes. Um, but in this curriculum, I really want to point out each of the seminars because each of them really covers a part of our community. And honestly, it's, it's what's going to give you that 360 view of our community. So we start with the environment. Um, then we go with media and our community. Um, no, actually, we start with the environment. We go down to infrastructure and development. I'm seeing that there, we've, had, we've made a few changes since the presentation. And I'm very sorry about that. So we start with the environment, infrastructure and development. Then we continue with financial services, criminal justice, education, culture and heritage, Cayman Islands government, sister islands perspective, stay over and cruise tourism, immigration and workforce development, human services and healthcare. And finally, we go to media in our community. Um, and the really interesting part here is that each of these seminars have enough elasticity that every year, although it's the same seminar, it just depends on what's the hot topic that's happening right now in the community. What is it that really is going to like move, um, move our curiosity and our knowledge of, of wanting to know more about each of the topics? Um, you know, it, and it just changes year after year and Leadership Cayman just continues to be relevant um, for each of the seminars on what we need to talk about that year. So that is really interesting to, to note here. Um, then when we're talking about the seminar assignment, the seminar for format and the class project, it's, in, it's, it's good to know that each of, the, each of those seminars, except for the first one, is actually done by two members of the class. And those are who we call the moderators of that seminar. But the moderators of that seminar, it's just like, well, what if I get criminal justice and I don't know anything about criminal justice? Well, the interesting thing is that you're not alone. You're going to have a mentor, that the mentor is actually somebody from a leadership key man previous class that has really all the knowledge um, and all the contacts and everybody and anything that everything that you may need to know to be able to get that that seminar right is going to be mentoring through that through that seminar. And um, so, yeah, the class, each of the seminars is going to have two moderators and the mentor. The first, and I'm just going to go back for a second. The first seminar is the one that ch changes up a little bit because in the first seminar, we're going to have class of 2021. Um, the two mentors and I'm sorry, the two moderators and the mentor are all from class of 2021, and they will be showing you the ropes of how are these seminars prepared? What do you need to keep in mind? So they'll kind of kind of lay out the ground for you and you'll be able to have a better understanding of it. So when we start in seminar number two, um, we all are on the same page of what's going to happen. Um, so in the seminar format, each seminar has a tour. The tour is optional. But what I would say, what I would suggest is if you're looking at your timelines of when you're able to attend, when you're not able to attend, I would leave some wiggle room on Wednesday to be able to attend the tour. The tour is always a, an interesting thing to do. Um, for criminal justice, we typically tour the, the prison. And it's not just getting to the front gate of the prison and looking at it from the, in, from the outside. We actually get into the prison. We're able to talk to the wards. We really just like get a completely different perspective of of the prison. Um, in my year in the tourism and cruise and cruise seminar, we actually like we had cruise ships here in Cayman at that point in time. We actually had lunch in the cruise ship, and we had the experience of being able to um, understand what was that the cruise ship tourism had to go through every time that they get, you know, what they see when they get here, how they have to get in, you know, the little boats that move them onto island, to the island and then move them back. So we were able to experience that firsthand. 
um, last year and James, if you don't mind taking yourself on mute, you were in the airport tower. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, sorry, I always hesitate on that one. I'm just like, James, remind me. I was not on that. Tem I was not on that tour. That's why I hesitate so much. I missed it, and I'm quite jealous of it. Um, no we were in the airport tower. Thank you, James. Sure. Um, we were in the airport tower and really got an understanding of you know how that works. So each seminar does have a tour, um, which makes it very interesting. We try to do the tour before the dinner, so kind of like four o'clock. But really, depending on the location, depending if that location has restrictions or has preference in time, um, we will adjust the tour to the time that is available. Um, you will know it in advance. So it's not like Wednesday morning, it's like, oh, by the way, today's at 9 a.m. No, you will know in advance. You will be able to plan your day in advance. Um, the dinner is optional and dinner is always at five o'clock. Um, Nina helps us coordinate all the dinners and they're always great. Um, Truth be told, I am a foodie and I like I like my food. And if um, I have to admit, dinner has always been great in, in Leadership Command. So the dinner is from 5 to 6 p.m. And then th at 6 p.m., that's when the seminar actually starts. And it was three, three speakers that are leaders or experts in their field. The example that's here is the one for criminal justice. So in the speakers, we had a judge, a defense attorney, and the police commissioner. Really different points of you know, they're all different points of view, really interesting information, and you can really get a different point of view from each of those um, speakers. So the speakers, we, you, we divide you in three breakout sessions. So each breakout session is at eight, eight individuals, eight to nine individuals, and you have 45 minutes to have an in-depth conversation with that speaker. You can ask that speaker anything and everything that you want. Um, Leadership Cayman does have, you know, a tagline that is what we talk in Leadership Cayman stays in Leadership Cayman. Um, many of these speakers have our repeat speakers, so they know the quality and caliber of the attendees of, of Leadership Cayman. So they are quite, they do, they do quite speak to us freely and give us a lot of insights and a lot of feedback of what's going on. And, and we're able to get into the nitty gritty. Um, in more than one occasion, we've gotten a little nugget of something that's going to happen before it happens. And then when it happens, we're just like, I need that. Um, so that's important to note as well. And then finally, after the three breakout sessions that each one of them is 45, it's approximately 45 minutes, they might slightly change. We finally have a panel discussion where we get the three speakers, bring them into a room together, and we can ask them again, anything and everything that we want. And this is really, um, this the panel discussions, I find them very interesting because when we're in the panel discussion, you might have asked a question to one of the speakers and want to see the perspective from the other two speakers because for some reason you didn't ask them. Or you got a different perspective from one of them and you want to understand better of why one has a complete different perspective from the other two. Um, the panel discussion is a great moment to ask those questions. So this is the format of each of the seminars. Um, and as you can see, you know, it's, it's, very, it's a very straightforward format, um, extremely engaging, extremely insightful. Um, the speakers never disappoint. Um, here are some examples of these seminars. So seminar number seven last year with the Cayman Islands government. Um, and in the seminar number nine, the state over cruise ship, there it is, the tower that I was speaking about, um, again, these seminars never disappoint. In the seminar eight, that's a sister island perspective, personally one of my favorite seminars, um, we get to go to the sister islands. We go on, we go on the Friday, first flight that they leaves came, that leaves Grand Cayman, and we arrive to Cayman Brack. As a team, we decide if we want to stay up to Saturday or if we want to go to Little Cayman on from Saturday to Sunday and we get to get a, a good perspective of, of the two sister islands. Um, what's really interesting of, of going to the sister islands and actually exploring them is that you really get an understanding of the sister islands. You really get to explore the issues that are specific to them, um, come to understand, you know, what are those, if, if anybody else goes to Cayman Brac, what would you recommend to do? Because remember, you are going to be very insightful after you do Leadership Cayman. And I have to say, I think that everybody that goes to Leadership Cayman becomes 
one of um, Cayman Brax and Little Cayman's best tour guides, because we really do do a lot of exploring. Um, and I do have to say, one of the mentors that's class of 2015 with me is Shivala Burke. And um, she's always, she is um, from Cayman Brack and she's heavily involved um, with the tourism in, in Cayman Brack. So we do really get a, a, a firsthand feedback from her. And we always get um, her full attention that day, which is amazing. Um, and again, she's a fellow Leadership Cayman alumni, so um, she understands very well the program and definitely understands what it's all about. Um, we do get to meet also all the you know, different leaders from the variety sectors of the, of the sister islands, you know, from the healthcare cent, um, sector, from the government, from industries, the hotels, etc. cetera. Um, and apart from that, there is some leisure time to bond with your classmates, which um, at the beginning you're like, but then afterwards, you're like, we want all the time possible to be able to bond with your classmates because you really do create special bond um, between all the classmates. Um, and you will be you will experience that. You'll see that every class of leadership came in. Although we don't see each other every day when we see each other, um, it's just like time has not passed. Um, something that's really great about leadership came in again is again, it's how you connect with your classmates. Um, I don't see Leadership Cayman in my class of 2015 every day, but I am confident that any time that I would need anything or I need have any questions, um, anything from my class, all I need to do is reach out and I'm sure that they have my back and they're able to assist. And it's not only class of 2015, but across all the, all the classes, um, I, I have that same sentiment. Um, now, the class project. In the class project, um, you can see here that it's kind of a summary of the last three projects that we did. In 2019, it was the Pines. Um, in 2020, we worked with the Golden Age Home. In 2021, it was Acts of, of Random Kindness. Um, my year, we did um, Meals on Wheels. So if you drive by Meals on Wheels and you see that exterior painted, um, that was class of 2015 that, that painted all of Meals on Wheels. So when we're doing the class project, it's not about just giving back and doing something for a nonprofit, but it's also about really getting to understand that nonprofit that we have selected as a class. Um, and you really get a perspective that not many people get. Um, in my year, again, it was, um, it was Meals on Wheels. And I thought I knew a lot about Meals on Wheels and what Meals on Wheels was about. But honestly, it was... It was a very interesting experience of me of coming to understand really what was Meals on Wheels about, and it, it really made me change the perspective of what I had, um, of what I thought Meals on Wheels was. Now the experience. So um, these are just a few of, of the members of Leadership Cayman. So this was class of 2019. This was class of 2020, and this was class of 2021. Um, each of the classes, if you ask them, they are the best class that Leadership Cayman has. Um, and I, I truly believe that they, each one of them is the best class. They, each of the classes are amazing, and really um, the leaders that go through this program are awesome. Now, this is where I, I start getting a little bit like, I'm going to get comfortable and I'm going to talk about it because this is, it's applications are due on the 12th. And I really want to be really transparent about how's the criteria, how do we select um, that class of tw the 25 par participants and what's the process. So important to know, um, obviously the criteria, like the main criteria is you've got to be over 25 years old. Um, you have to be at least middle management position at your current workplace. And I do like to clarify, what does middle management mean? Um, it really, you need to look at yourself and, and see if what, where your role is, is mid management or above. Um, you know, mid management here, in, um, you know, from what I have of experience, I have to say, it doesn't have to be a, a specific job title. It has to do more about what's your confidence, confidence in management. Um, and that's why it says at least middle management and above. You are going to be with community leaders. 
not only your class is going to be full of community leaders, but you are going to be interacting with top community leaders in each of the seminars. So you want to be sure that you're going to be comfortable enough interacting with each of these individuals. Um, and, you know, in, in our experience, it is that once you are in middle management, you are much more comfortable um, asking those hard questions, finding out more, not being shy, interacting a bit more. So that's where I say middle management, look at, your, look at yourself in your position and kind of like check that box for yourself. Um, and the status is really, you must be a resident of the Cayman Islands for at least for one year. Um, if you're not resident of the Cayman Islands for at least for one year, wait until next year. And we always have a good mix of, of, of a class that is mixed between um, local Kamanians, expats, and it's a really great interaction between all of us. Now, the application process. This is where um, really interesting. So the application process starts on the 12th, that it's a Friday. Um, the best way that I can say it is you start showing your leadership skills in your application. As a leader, you always want, when you're presenting at work, when you're presenting as a leader, you always want to make sure that you are presenting and putting the best foot, foot forward. Um, you are making sure that all the information that you're supplying is spot on. You're always making sure that everything is nice and clean and clear. Um, so I would just say your application should not be any different from that. You are selling yourself in your application form is the best way I can put it. And you really want to show that that leader side of yourself um, in the application form. Um, then when we are, the applications are graded by the committee, when we receive, the committee is a planning committee and it's a group of nine individuals. When we receive these application forms, it's important to note that we're grading these applications without knowing who submitted them. The nine, um, the nine planning committee members that are revising these, do not have no idea of who these individuals are. We just have like the information. And unless we really, 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 really know you, we have no idea who you are. Um, and it's happened to me many times. You know, I've been part of the planning committee for the last um, four years, and this is going to be my fifth. Um, and it's important to note that in more, more than one occasion, somebody has arrived to the interview and I was just like, I know the person, I had no idea that their application was part of the of the application um, pool. I have a question here that's saying, what is the average applications that have been submitted in the past? Um, so it is a competitive program. Um, you know, the class is 25, it's 25, it's limited to 25 individuals. And we get an average of, you know, some years we've gotten 30 applications, some years we've gotten 60 applications. Um, so it is very competitive. Um, again, I would just say, if you're interested in the program, put your best foot forward and submit that application to impress. And it really is not about, um, it's, there's no right or wrong answers. It's about showcasing yourself in the application. Um, after the applications are graded, from that application list, we submit all of our grades, each nine, the nine individuals that are grading these applications, pass on their grading, their, their, you know, their scores to Nina and Nina shortlists lists, list them. There has been years that we do have to do a lot of shortlisting because obviously we would love to interview everyone, but sometimes it's just not possible, um, especially that interviews are um, set in three days. This year, it's going to be November 29th, November 30th, which I believe that's a Monday and a Tuesday. And the last day is going to be December 2nd. That is going to be a Thursday. Um, so the candidates are shortlisted. We're invited to the interview stage. And then from there, um, by before mid-December, we should know who the class of 2021 is. So if you apply and you're interested in the program, you will know before this, before this year if you're in the class or not. So it's, it's really a straightforward process. And it's important to know, um, I always say, if you're submitting your application, please put your first, best foot forward. I insist that because I've seen so many applications where the time, you know, the, the applicant put very little effort in the application, is not shortlisted for some reason. And then they're just like, why didn't you select me? 
Um, don't you know that I am, and I'm just going to give a very random example. Don't you know I'm the CEO of X, Y, and Z? I am a leader. I should be in this program. And it's just like, well, you didn't showcase that in your application. We didn't know who we had in front of us. Um, so it's it's important to, I, I always like to just point that out, especially in the information session, because you are taking that first step by understanding the program and joining one of these information sessions. So I want to be able to give you, um, you know, most as cues as possible of, of what to expect and what to do in your application. Any questions, any other further questions before I go on on the application process? Okay, if you have any other questions, we can look at them at the end. Um, well, actually, we just got into the end. I forgot that that was the last slide. Um, so at, at this point in time, it, it really is, I'm open to any questions. Feel free to write them in the chat, or if you want to take yourself from mute, you want to unmute yourself and, and ask it in person, um, please do. While you guys get your questions in order, actually, I'm going to invite James um, to come on into, into the spotlight. And um, because James was class of 2021, he really has the whole experience um, in you know, the front of his mind. And I don't wanna be the only one telling you how great and amazing and prestigious this, this program is. I want somebody else that just did it to just share a little bit of their experience with you. So James, all yours. Sure. Thanks, Christina. So uh, good evening, everyone. I'm James Robinson. Um, I'm manager, consulting manager at EY. Uh, so I'm in kind of the, the private sector and public accounting realm. So um, I was part of the uh, class of leadership came in, uh, class of 2021, as Christina had mentioned. My seminar that I was responsible for planning was the Sister Island seminar. So a lot of people were very excited and eager to learn about that trip. Um, prior to going into Leadership Came In, I actually didn't know anything about uh, Leadership Came In and, um, you know, attended an information session. So it's okay if you're on this call today and you don't really know. Um, well, hopefully you've, you've gained a lot about the, the program, but you will learn a lot more if you are selected for the program. Um, and like Christina had mentioned, you know, the application is very important um, and being very clear, concise, and very detail-oriented um, like she just mentioned before. But the program for me uh, changed my life in a lot of different ways. Um, I was one, able to meet, um, you know, connections that I probably would have never met um, if, it, if I wasn't through the program. So I've met um, several people that I just never had interaction with before. And I've also have, um, you know, have, you know, my classes now, a lot of my close friends on island, uh, we've got several people that, uh, one person that's actually getting married next month and we're, going to their wedding. So I uh, never would have ever met, known that or met them if I would have gone through the program as well. Um, I think the last piece that I just wanted to kind of mention for this program is it's, it's okay um, one to, to go through this program and one not know what you're going to do, but just to be open-minded and having kind of like growth mindset as you go through this program, whether you are local or not local, uh, having that open mind to the program um, and willing to definitely connect with all your classmates um, because like you'll never, like Christina mentioned before, you will never know when you need a favor. And I didn't think I'm not one of those people that usually ask for favors. I'm the one that usually was, did the doer. Um, but, you know, I, I, sometimes I just raise my hand and ask for a favor or just plan planning events for people, uh, birthdays, whatever the case may be to stay connected uh, with my, the class members as well. So um, very excited to see uh, the number of attendees on this call today and uh, if you got any questions, feel free to uh, reach out to me. As uh, Christina, there's a slide on there that it says the, the number and the uh, email as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions. But uh, that's kind of my experience, Christina. Thank you. Thank you so much, James. Sure. Um, so, yeah, if there's I'm not sure if anybody has any last question to ask in this information session. I hope I have been able to cover a little bit of everything that um, that I've spoken about, about Leadership Came Man. Um, something that I know I said, but I'm just going to repeat, you'd be surprised of how much you're going to learn about your community. Um, there's so many people, including myself, that have, are actively involved with the community, are in different, you know, different um, nonprofits, 
in charities working with one type of, you know, with one sector, with the other sector. And you'd be surprised how much you learn um, when you come through Leadership Cayman. And really, there is no other program on the island that I can really just put my hand on my heart and say, you're going to get so much exposure to each of these topics in such a short time frame. You would be able, you know, if you propose it to do it yourself, most likely you'll be able to do it, but it won't be in six months. It would be in six years. Um, so again, I, I really do invite you that if you're considering Leadership Cayman, man take that, take that step, submit your application, and, and yeah, hope to see you there and hope to see your, you know, see, well, I hope to see an application because I won't know whose it is. Um, for everybody that's in, in this session. And um, again, if you have any further questions, if you have anything to, you know, to add that maybe you don't just want to ask today, um, feel free to send um, mentoring at caymanchamber.ky um, your question. Um, Nina will be checking out those, those emails and um, we'll be answering back. Again, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you giving us um, your Monday afternoon to listen about Leadership Command, and um, I hope that you apply. Thank you.